Um, but yeah, down to down to four teams now. It's gone by um, feels like pretty fast, and we have our final four now. Yeah, if the by the skinny by the numbers and the and the knockout round, the twelve knockout round games, including the quarters and the round is sixteen. You've only had eight first half goals in twelve matches. So if that was yeah. something that you caught on to. Good on you. 17 of the 25 goals came in the second half. Seven were 80 minute, 80th minute or later. You had five matches go to extra time, including both England matches. Four went to penalties. And you've got the second place team and the third place team from the same group, uh, Netherlands and France, both moving on uh, to the semis. And, and ironically, uh, in, in the quarterfinals, uh, I, I always love to joke with, with people like they always talk about expected goals and how it, it, it manifests and ultimately it plays out and pans out. Well, the only thing you can do, and again, it was proven right, the only thing you can expect when you win expected goals is expect to lose. Because all four teams that had a higher, <laughs> all four teams that had a higher expected goal total in the quarterfinals wind yeah. up losing. So uh, you, you, you got to finish. If you don't finish, the uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the carbon gods are going to come back and bite you. In it. Yeah, and, I mean, you alluded to the uh, the Cody Gakpo Gakpo goal earlier uh, today. That would have put him on four and the sole leader in in, in the boot race. And then also Hercus, we had him as a uh, an anytime scorer today. But that was yeah. a uh, a huge comeback by. Uh, by the Dutch today to uh, to get into the the semis against England and that game will be on Wednesday, but the uh, the first game will be on Tuesday. Yeah. Spain, who have been the best side in the tournament, I think everybody can kind of agree on that, and they're and they're going to go up against France. Uh, Spain plus one sixty to win on the three way. France yeah. plus two ten. The draws plus two hundred. Uh, Spain minus one twenty five to advance. France plus a hundred. So, any any early thoughts on this one from what you've seen from these two teams so far? I, I didn't know that France is as Iowa football right now. I didn't <laughs> expect that bear coming into this. Right, they they had the semifinals, having scored zero open play goals in five games. Austria own goal, nil nil versus Netherlands, a PK versus Poland, the Belgium own goal, and beat and beat Portugal on PKs. They can't score bear. Isn't that a problem? I, I, I know Mbappe is hurt, and I will say though. I am surprised. I, I think he's hurt more than he lets on because I, so I know that because the nose. Look, he hurt his nose. Obviously, he's wearing the, the the face mask, and they mentioned on telecast he's trying to avoid headers, which makes a lot of sense. But Bear, he's a good enough athlete mm-hmm. to not hit his face on a header. You know, like he 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 knows where to to, to shoot with his head. I feel like he's just avoiding that altogether because his nose is just. In, he's in a lot of pain. It hurts a lot. It's it's messed up. It doesn't feel good. He's avoiding contact in the box as well. And I know France won without him on penalties, but it does feel like Bear, if he cannot play in this game up to, I don't know, 85, 90%, like, 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 like if he's not going to make any chances in the box because he's worried about getting hurt again, it feels like France can't win this game. Yeah, it, there, were, there were questions about his fitness coming into the competition uh, that, that, that was, was he fully fit. And it, it looked like he was fine in that first match from a fitness standpoint, but then he suffered the broken nose. And, and you're in that uh, in the match, in, in the quarterfinal match, he definitely took uh, a shot with with the ball to the side of his head, and it caused that mass to kind of bang up against his nose. So I wonder if that was a combination of maybe something uh, a delayed headache or a, a migraine or some kind of vision issue maybe that came on late, or was he just gassed from running however many miles he ran. Uh, during the match, and he basically said to Deshaun, "Hey, I, I'm I'm not I, I'm not a benefit to being out there. If I have to take a penalty, it's it's not going to be my best effort." So, uh, I'll give him credit for for saying that. Like, I am not the best man to be putting out there. Put someone else out there. But but I do agree with you. Like, it concerns me, and and I think and we kind of joked about this last time that every French knockout round is the same thing. It's nil nil, and you feel like the, the the underdog has them on the ropes, and they have an opportunity to beat him, and they're getting chances. And then, next thing you know, they're either getting a, an own goal, a, a deflection off of something, or, or wind up winning in kicks. So that will probably will have to be the plan here again. But I wonder if you're going to see some lineup changes because they did look more dangerous on the attack uh, with, with Rabio suspended on the yellow card and Kamavenga in there. Kamavenga should, probably should have won the game uh, in regulation. He, he missed a, uh, a pretty good look 
But uh, I think France is better with Kamavinga in there. Uh, I, I think you should probably put Giroud in there earlier. In dry, maybe maybe you, you bench Griezmann. Uh, they, they need they need to figure some things out because I, I don't think sitting and absorbing pressure for 90 minutes against Spain is the best way to go about winning. I, like I am. Uh, I'm going to be betting draw and under two and a half here. We talked about uh, France's lineup. Spain's going to have some issues with their Good. lineup too. Because you have Danny Carvajal, one of their better defenders out. Uh, Pedri, who is a fantastic young player, he's hurt. And Robin, Robin Lenormand, one of their other central defenders, he's out. So they're going to have a different uh, uh, defense. Uh, Nacho will start yeah. and maybe Grimaldi comes in there as well. So uh, they're going to be a little bit different on the on the back line as well. So maybe someone with not as much experience will make a mistake and that will help France. But I am going to be on under two and a half. I am going to be on draw. So maybe, maybe Spain or draw on the double chance as well. Uh, I can't see this match being uh, a wide open affair. Certainly with, uh, it, it was funny. One of my, uh, one of my good buddies was joking, uh, sent me a text uh, yesterday and was joking how the, the, the King of Spain uh, needs to go into the, 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 the Spanish locker room and declare them Euro 2024 champion, kind of like President Nixon did in the uh, in, in the Texas Arkansas game. Like, like Germany Spain w- w- was the championship game that was worthy of a title game, and we we said we thought the winner of that game would win it. So yeah. we'll see if ultimately they do. But that was that was a good line referencing a little good uh, college football history in there with uh, with soccer with the way that match was played. You mentioned a couple of different ways to wager on these games. I will say, I know I mentioned I'm, I'm not winning as many soccer wagers as I thought. Maybe, look, they're low. I'm betting a little bit amount of these goal scoring numbers, but some of the different ways to do this bear has been fun. I know I had, we, we both had, I think, the other day a, a draw at under two and a half. It, it, it probably was the France game as well, right? We had that draw at under two and a half as well. So there are many different ways to wager on these games. We, we took a 0 0 the other night, didn't hit, but that was a, a fun way to look at games. So there's many ways to do this, guys. If you're like me trying to figure it out, as you go, I haven't done this very much. You don't just have to bet straight up on who wins um, or who advances. You can just wager on many different things here, Bear. Yeah, no, you, you can. And one of the other things you can bet on is player of the tournament, golden boot. And, and we saw the the boot affected in the uh, the final game of the day. So you still have uh, the three players stuck on three goals because Gakpo's goal was changed from his goal. To an own goal, so you, so you have yeah. him, him and and and, and Musiala, Musiala and Mikadatse from Georgia. Both those two guys are out. So we got Gakpa and Trance is out from as well. So uh, Gakpo still has an opportunity to get another goal either against England or should they advance in the final. Uh, if not, you're going to get some nasty dead heat tickets and really reduce reduce your odds. But the other bet which we have some guys involved in is the player of the tournament. And this market, it seems pretty straightforward, expect, except for one team. I think if Spain win, you're going to get Rodri, likely. He's the favorite right now. He's a short shot uh, to win player of the tournament. Uh, I, I think you mean Lamal will get some consideration as well, should he be as dynamic as he's been so far. But, but I think Spain, you've got one of those two guys. France, you're probably going to get the keeper, Bignan, or Conte, or Saliba's even gotten some some uh, some run lately, and he's getting really hyped and publicized in uh, in the telecast and in social circles. Like there were offshores that had the keeper, and they had uh, Saliba at a fifty to one even after the match. So uh, search around; you might be able to find a good price on one of those two guys because it, it's not going it's not going to be Mbappe, it's not going to no. be Griezmann, it's not going to be Giroud. Like all the the, the it's not going to be Dembele. Like all of the usual suspects you thought it might have been for France, it's not going to be one of those guys. So look around; you can maybe find some 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 stray prices there on either the keeper or Saliba, the, the back, and then the Dutch. It'll probably be Gakpo, I would think. He's three goals yeah. and been great. Memphis Depay has been terrible. They need to sit him. We'll get more on that in a, in a bit. So, And then you have England. England could be like the, the Connor McDavid Stanley Cup situation where yeah. you've got a player win player of the tournament on a losing team. Because frankly, nobody on England deserves to be named player of the tournament. They, they've been a boring, horrible team to watch that yep. has been pro- have been terrible for 90% of their matches and, and and they're like the blackjack player who is hits on 16 against the deal with holding a six and they wind up getting a five to draw 20 to 21. Like that's what their matches have been like 
if, if England were to win, like I don't know who on their team you could make a legitimate case for to be player of the tournament. It, it, Bellingham's been bad outside of the – he scored the goal. It was great. Yeah. Kane's been average. Like, I, if you were looking to take a shot, I guess, maybe at one guy, maybe Bukayo Saka because he kind of adjusted his role in this game and, and, he, and he did score and he, and he, he looked – dangerous today so like if moving forward like if they win <laughs> it, it could be soccer but like there there is a chance i think that if england were to win this you could be looking at a uh a losing that you could be looking at, at rodri or 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 Mignon from from for somebody yeah. uh, on the losing team that winds up winning this thing why doesn't england play with the same sort of energy and focus and intensity for the first 75 minutes i understand you pace yourself it's important in, in sporting matches, including this one, but it feels like they're only playing their best when they absolutely have to bear. Doesn't that catch up to you pretty quickly against a Dutch team? Like that feels like a, a, not a way to win no. against the the three the three teams left. I mean, outside of France, who obviously can't score, but I think France would 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 probably beat England right now the way England's playing. No, I, I think a couple of things on that. I think that the head coach uh, Garrett Southgate is very hesitant to make lineup changes until. He faces desperation. And when you're desperate, you do desperate things and you kind of move people around and you put more attackers on and you try and create some mismatches and and, and you take some more chances. And, and that's ultimately what's happened. Uh, he had Saka in a position where uh, he, was, he was able to make a big play. He brought Tony on in, in a situation against uh, uh, what Slovakia and he made a, a chip on a, on a corner. Uh, to set up the uh, the tying goal, so I, I think that's the biggest criticism uh, people have of, of Southgate is that he's not willing to make these adjustments early on and put them in a better position to be more forward pressing uh, in more of a threat early in matches. And the other thing that I think is an issue too, and I think it was John Stones that might have even mentioned it before the match uh, earlier against Switzerland was that they're not necessarily playing where they've played. On their on the on their club team, so they're not as, not as comfortable in in those spots on the field in serving those roles. So it, it's kind of like the All Star team, where maybe you're you're a shortstop and you're playing third base, or yeah. you're a you're a center fielder and you're playing right field. Like like I, I think those things are going on, and and, and we'll see what happens because if you look at the game against the Dutch, uh, England uh, plus one one fifty five favorite. Uh, Netherlands yeah. plus 180, 215 on the draw, and England minus 125, Dutch 105 uh, to advance. Uh, no suspensions. No, no uh, the, Both teams will be uh, at full strength here in terms of uh, yellows, which is a good thing. I, I, I think this is going to be another ugly, boring match because like we just yeah. discussed, Gareth, Southgate is not going to change the lineup. He's going to do what he does, and – you're looking at a, at, a, at a Dutch team, which is more than comfortable to kind of yeah. absorb pressure. And, the, and the, there, there are a lot of familiar players uh, in familiarity with this side because there are a lot of players on that Dutch team that that play in England. So they're, they're familiar with those players. Uh, certainly uh, Nathan Ake, Virgil van Dijk on that back line. They know all these guys from, from their battles with Liverpool yeah. and City. So it's like I can't see a ton of goals. Uh, I'm gonna play under two and a half. I'm gonna play draw. Uh, <laughs> eight of the twelve, eight of the twelve games in the knockout round were under two and a half. Yeah. So like that, that that's a good, that, that, that's a good yeah. just an auto play in a high stakes soccer match. But we talked about England with maybe some lineup changes. I would, if I'm Ron Coleman from from the Netherlands, I'm looking at some lineup changes here as well because Memphis Depay is a zero factor. He should not he should not be on, starting on the pitch. I get Veghorst is better coming off the bench and fine, bring him in off the bench, but start Frimpong, start Malin, yeah. a little bit of more of a threat uh, than Memphis Depay is because Depay has not been good at all. And uh, fortunately, because of the uh, the, the heroics uh, of, of a great header from a center back today, and then the uh, the own goal that was taken away from Gakpo, which was like an inch away from hitting his foot, <laughs> and we, we almost got four. But uh, yeah, I, I see I see two semifinals. I see two semifinals. Yeah. They're going to wind up going extra time again here. 
So two things, Bear. Netherlands uh, or draw is minus two ten. Is that is that too rich for you to take? No, in, this, in the double no, chance. No, no, not at all. Yeah, not at all. I, I like that one. I like that one. And also too, a, a par par draw lay. A draw lay. A par <laughs> par. A, excuse me. A draw draw, draw parlay. Par, let's get it there out. Go. Let's get there it out. Draw draw parlay. There we go. Sorry, I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. My brain's on vacation too. We did that the other night. It didn't actually hit, but I feel like going back to that might be fun to throw, throw a little sprinkle on, right? Why Why not? You've seen 12 matches in the knockout round. You've had five draws. Three of the four Absolutely. quarterfinals were, were, were draws. So, again, the way these matches are going to set up and, and, oh. play, and play out, I think there's a really good possibility so, that we're looking at two draws here so, uh, in, in the semifinal before we get uh, to the final as well. So, that's seven ninety nine. Plus seven ninety nine. Good, I like that. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. maybe the book have rounded up to uh to plus eight hundred for, for for us and uh and and make it and make it really nice. So um, that's all for uh that's all for our Euro conversation now. Unless you got something else to uh to add and throw in, how's the trip? Uh, the trip is great. It's, it's a lot of fun. We'll, uh, we've had a good time. Kids are at camp, so parents are playing a little bit, and we'll Beautiful. be back and. Ready to watch? Uh, there's one TV in the whole resort. Bear, I have it on. The, I have it on on Fox now. I've been going up and down yeah. from the one TV watching. Uh, I watch all the PKs from the one TV room we have here. It's been it's been fun. 